Hi all, welcome back. So today I want to show you a quick rundown of ENSP and its basic tools, just so that you can try and get the most out of it while you're learning to use Huawei's enterprise devices. Well, seeing as my Windows 11 video was the most popular, I think I'll demonstrate on Windows 11. So first up, let's get ENSP open. Every time you open it, it always will ask you for admin rights. And then when you get hit with the welcome screen, you'll have your examples, your recent topologies, and the little learn section. Now, if you don't want to see this anymore, just click on the don't show anymore button and click on the top left button that says new topo and you'll be on a blank new working topology. Now I'm going to drag in an AR2220 router. Then I'm going to click on the switch icon, that one there, and drag in an S5700 switch. I'm also going to bring in a PC just to act as a end device for the network so that we can send pings and stuff. Now with routers, they don't come with that many interfaces built in. So if you want to add some more interfaces or add some different kinds of interfaces, you need to right click on the router and choose settings. And from there, you can see these little network cards that we can slot into the router's blank, black slots there. I'm going to put a 2SA a serial interface in the first slot in the top right corner. That is the first slot. And then I think I'm going to grab us another AR2220 router and do the same thing, just so that we can plug that serial cable into something. There we go. Now, as soon as we've got all these devices here, let's cable them up. Uh, first thing we want to use is that little black lightning bolt that lets me choose different kinds of connectors. Auto is a bit boring. Let's do it more interestingly where we can choose that little dashed line that says serial and then our cursor changes to look like a little cable. I click on the device and then I choose a serial interface from the menu that pops out. And then I click on the next device and I choose a serial interface on the menu that pops out. Then I click on a copper connector that is usually used for ethernet cables. Then I click on the device, choose an ethernet interface, same with the switch there and same with the switch to the PC. Now you'll notice that the connections have these little red dots on them. That's telling you the connection is currently off or is not working. Well, all these devices are off, we haven't started them yet, so that's why they're red at the moment. Now to start them, I can either click, drag and highlight, and then right click and say start, and that'll start all the devices I've highlighted. Or I can right click on an individual device and click start, or I can just not select anything and click the little green play button at the top there and it'll start all your devices up. Please be aware that the little progress bar for starting devices is based on the number of devices you're starting, not really how far they are with booting. Now that you've done that, you will have to wait a little bit for these devices to start up. And you'll see that some of the connections start going green. Now that all the interfaces have gone green, let's uh, open up some command line interfaces that you could use to configure these devices. So you can either individually click on the device, right click it and say uh, CLI, or you can click the open CLI button in the top window. By default, it opens like this, where each device has its own separate window. If you want to work this way, that's great, your choice. Or just to the left of the minimize button, there's this little rectangle with three squares above it. You can click that. And it'll put all the devices in one window and each device will have its own tab in that window. Now, if you're anything like me, you might not be too happy with the font or the color of the font that is being used by default. The good news is we can change that. You can click on the settings menu, which is that little cog underneath the close, minimize and restore. And then you get these little options that you can play with. CLI surprisingly does not change your font settings in the command line. You've got to go to the font tab I know, surprise, right? And then you choose the select next to the font information. And then you can choose the font style, uh, the font itself. And probably more importantly, if you've got bad outside like me, you can choose the size. Then it's a case of you can choose color for the font and the background as well. I'm going to go for a gray on the back, black background because generally when I demonstrate this to people, uh, people tend to see this a lot better, especially if I'm on like a projector. But if you want to go for like neon green or neon pink, you go for it. You do you. 
Now, in terms of showing your interfaces, you can either mouse over them like I was earlier, and then the interface names are revealed when you've moused over a cable that connects the two devices together. However, you can also click this Show All Interfaces button in the toolbar ribbon, and that will show all interfaces permanently, which is nice because then you don't have to keep mousing over it, especially if you're already in the command line and your fingers are over the keyboard. Next, we've got a little drawing palette. You click on it, it's just to the left of the zoom in button, magnifying glass with a plus sign. And you can then draw lines or squares or circles. I'm going to draw a little circle here for us. Well, more like an oval. And then, once you've done that, you can close the window. And you can click and drag to move it around. You can right click on it and you can move it backwards or forwards a layer. You can also change the color, which is probably quite nice because maybe you don't like that blue color it's used by default. So let's go with an orange just to be different. And oops, you can see I accidentally drew a second circle there in blue. Oh well. And you can resize it, move it and all that. Now to go with the shapes, you might want to actually label stuff. So just to the left of the drawing icon, that little yellow square in the toolbar, you've got a text box. It's a little speech bubble with three green dots in it. You click anywhere and you can begin typing. If you tap escape, you can normally get out of it or you can press enter, your choice. I normally go for escape because that way I don't get an extra line. And then if you right click on that text box you just created, you can change the font size, you can change the background color, maybe to blend in with the shape, or you can right click again, oops, right click, and you can also change the font color as well, and voila, now you've got a cool label. You can also do this anywhere you like. So let me call this the call switch level. Or call switches, that'll probably be a nicer name. And then, eh, be nicer if it was a bit bigger. So I change the font size and I just choose the font size and it looks way better. Now you can also rename the devices that you've dragged in just by double clicking on their name. So I'm gonna change the PC to be called user one. Uh, LS1 I will change to Core Switch, Core SW1, sorry, I'll use shorthand. And I'll click and drag the AR1 name so it's not sitting on top of the cable, and then I can change it to R1. And I'll rename AR2 to be ISP, just to act like an ISP. I'm actually tempted to quickly just set up the end user PC so that that's done and out the way. You just double click the PC and then you can change its settings. So I'm going to punch in 192.168.0.10 as its IP address, 255.255.255.0 and 192.168.0.1 for the gateway. Now you'll notice that the tab or the window of the command line interface actually has the device's name now. But in the command line itself, it's still running with the default device name of Huawei. That's fine. We'll worry about that later. Okay, so I'm going to quickly do a little bit of basic config on these routers just so that we've got something we can ping and have a bit of fun with. Um, I'm going to fast forward this because I don't intend this video to be the basics of configuring a Huawei appliance. But if you guys are interested in me doing that, I can get around to it. Although I do want to do a couple of other kinds of videos before I go back to Huawei. I'm a bit tired of doing ENSP all the time. I'd like to do a few different things with you all. So yeah, if you want, want me to do some more ENSP slash Huawei videos, let me know in the comments and I will take your suggestions, requests, etc. Otherwise though, uh, let's just let the fast forward finish and then I'll show you a few other cool things. Basically though, what I'm gonna configure is just some IP addressing and some basic routing so that we can get a packet to that ISP router. If you want to now have a bit of fun with analyzing your connection, you can either double click or right click on one of those little dots on the connection and you should see a pop-out menu that shows up that says Start Data Capture. If you click that, it's going to change blue. First time you do this, you're going to get a little firewall prompt, so don't be afraid to do that. And then Wireshark pops open and starts showing you the traffic that's coming or going on that virtual interface on the topology. That's why Wireshark got installed when you installed ENSP. Now, if I go and ping 192.168.1.0, you'll actually see Things like the ARP requests and responses and the ICMP echo requests and re echo replies coming and going, which is pretty cool. Or you can even trace RT, one of the IP addresses from this PC, 
And then you actually see the very weird way that Trace RT works, which I might go into greater detail in another video one day. But what's neat is you can capture this traffic and then save it for review later on or to demonstrate to other people, whatever. You can save this uh, Wireshark file as a PCAP file and do what you need to. And this might be useful because you can really fine tune exactly what traffic you capture. And then when you want to learn how a protocol works, you can actually d jump into what your protocols are actually doing from a fairly realistic network. Now, when you want to save your work, it's actually a very good idea to make sure that you go into your device's command line interface, make sure you're in user view, which is usually the greater than, less than symbols around the device's name, and you run the save command. Just save on its own, and you press enter, and it'll ask you, are you sure you want to do this? You say Y for yes, you press enter, saves it pretty quickly, and I'm notoriously religious with doing this before I do anything else, like closing the application. Now, if I want to actually save my topology file, I just go to the tool ribbon, look for the little floppy disk drives. I know they're stiffy disks, but I'm showing my age there a little bit. And you click save as, and then you just give the thing a name. I'm just going to call it saved topo. And now if I go to my documents, and I always like to check before I close the NSP. You'll see I've got the NSP capture from Wireshark from just now. And I've also got the saved topo folder. So when it looks like when you're saving in ESP, it's going to create a file, but it actually creates a folder. And then in that folder will be the .topo file you save and some weird looking folder names. Those are usually the saved config files that you've created when you saved in the command line in ENSP. So remember, you have to save both in the command line on the device as though you were doing it on a real device. And then you have to save the topo file as well. Otherwise, you will lose all your hard work. And if you're anything like me, you spent a lot of time playing around with some topologies you built. It can be very upsetting to lose all that time and effort that you put into it because you didn't save properly. And also, you might want to maybe get a little bit paranoid and save regularly. I have had ENSP crash on me before while I'm in the middle of something. And it's happened once or twice where I've lost a lot of work by not saving regularly. So just get into that habit. It's a good idea. Let's run through the rest of the toolbars quickly. So from left to right, you've got the new topo, you've got a paper project, you've got the open button, you've got the save if you've already saved the file, save as to specify, print if you want to print the picture of what you've done. You've got an undo and redo button, which is cool. Please note it doesn't undo your config though, it just undoes what you do in the topology file. Uh, then you've got the little button that turns your cursor back into an arrow for clicking. You've got a little hand that you can use to click and drag to move your view of the topology around. Quite nice if you've got a big topology file. You've got a delete icon, which is a little red cross. If you click that, you'll get a little crosshair instead of a cursor. And then you can click on items to delete, be it a connection or a device. It'll ask you, are you sure you want to delete this thing before you do it? You've got delete all lines, which if you click that, it'll ask you, are you sure? And then it'll delete all your connections. You've got the text box we looked at earlier. You've got the drawing tap palette. You've got a zoom in, zoom out button, which you can click to zoom in or zoom out of your topology. You've got a one colon one, which is going to reset your zoom to its default. You've got the play and stop buttons that you saw earlier. You've got the capture button, which will require you to choose an interface. You already did the show interface button. Uh, you've got the show grid, which gives you a grid line if you want to be very, very precise about where you put things. And that's the main buttons there. I almost forgot that last button, the show all command lines. Then to the right of that part of the toolbar, there'll be a button for opening up the Huawei discussion forums. You will have to have an account on Huawei's site to actually be able to comment and post stuff, but you can see it's fairly active. Stuff's fairly recently posted. Then you've got the official Huawei website link, which just takes you to the Huawei consumer portal. Cool. Uh, you've got the little settings cog that we clicked on earlier. Very useful if you want to play around with some of the settings in NSP. You've got a help menu, which gives you a few useful things. Just tells you a little bit about the devices in ENSP. Tells you a little bit about what they can run. There's a little FAQ as well that can help you try and figure out some problems you might run into. 
although my experience with the FAQ hasn't always been the greatest. And then you've got this drop down menu where you've got file, which does most of the stuff that's already on the ribbon. You've got the edit for copy and undo and stuff like that. You've got view, which lets you zoom in and control your toolbars. You've got tools, which has some useful things like the options menu and also the register and add device menus, which we've spoken a bit about if you've checked out my comments and other videos. And then there's a little exam button. Don't worry about that unless you're actually doing an exam with Huawei that involves using ENSP for practical demonstrations. And then you've got the little help thing, which brings up contents, updates, which good luck, you're gonna be waiting a long time before any updates come along. And that is pretty much that for ENSP, at least from the basics of using it. So as I said, if you guys are curious or interested in me doing some videos on some basic setup and protocols and stuff with the Huawei, let me know in the comments. But um, for the next few videos, I might do some stuff besides Huawei's network appliances. Otherwise though, thanks for watching all. If you haven't already, uh, like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next video.